Okay. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the session on identity in Christ for BC 110. Even before we could begin with our session, can we start uh, the session with a word of prayer? Can I request one of you all to please lead us into prayer? Sri Radha, would you like to pray? Thank you, Father, for this wonderful morning and wonderful day. Uh, thank you for your grace, mercy, your unfailing love. And uh, when we are coming here to uh, learn from your word of God and you help us to learn new things and give us new revelation, spirit of revelation, spirit of wisdom, Lord, that we can understand your word of uh, word. And we if surrender everything in your hand. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. So today we are going to continue on the session where we are discussing uh, on redeemed in Christ we finished. And now we have started with redeemed by his blood. We are on page 70, page 70, which talks about his blood speaks. Whose blood are we talking about? The blood of Jesus. We're talking about the blood of Jesus, which redeemed us. Jesus redeemed us by his precious blood, and this blood speaks. This blood speaks. Speak. So let's turn to Hebrew, book of Hebrew, chapter 12, verse 22 to 24. 22 to 24. So what does it say? It says, it reads like this. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, who are registered in heaven, to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of just men, made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. So who is the other person's blood that spoke Abel in the Old Testament? So when we come here, okay, it, the very first line of this verse says, but you have come to Mount Zion. What is Mount Zion? We see that in the Old Testament, it spoke about Mount Sinai. And here we see it's talking about Mount Zion. So what is that? That means we are in a different place now. We are in the new covenant, Mount Zion. So our relationship with God is not modeled after the Israel's experience at Mount Sinai. But we are at Mount Zion, where actually the name of the hill upon which the Jerusalem is, is situated on. So the law came to Sinai, but the cross was on Mount Zion. So the city of the living God. So there was no city at Mount Sinai. But Mount Zion. It is a heavenly Jerusalem. So to the general assembly, we see in this verse, it says, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn are registered in heaven. So what God gave at Mount Sinai was mainly for Israel, a law. 
but what god gave at mount zion is for everyone the redemption what jesus died on the cross where it satis it satisfied the justice of god bringing forth the spirit of just men made perfect through the work that was did on mount zion so to jesus the verse also says the scripture says to jesus the mediator of the new covenant so we see that jesus is the mediator between god and man in the new covenant but whereas at mount sinai was all about the old covenant which was based on a man's own earning or what he deserved is what he got from the law if he does good he'll get good but if he does wrong he has to face the consequence of the sin that he committed so this was the law that was given on mount sinai but on mount zion it is based on the new covenant it is based on the work that jesus did on the cross for you and me this is not something that we are deserved for this is not something that we have earned out of our goodness or out of our righteousness no it has been received by believing on the work that jesus did on the cross so jesus is the only mediator in the new covenant so the verse also talks about to the blood of the sprinkling that speaks of better things than of abel so we see here the blood of abel does not mean that the blood is shed in the martyrdom <clears throat> but then here you see when it comes to the blood of jesus it was willingness jesus offered himself willingly he sacrificed himself willingly there was a voluntarily in that sacrifice so the blood of jesus speaks better things than the blood of the animals that were sacrificed in the old testament which was a cover or the blood of abel so yet it is true that the blood of jesus the messiah whom we all waited in the new testament speaks better things than that of abel or of any animal the blood of abel cried out for justice to be satisfied to bring a vengeance but then the blood of jesus cried saying justice has been satisfied being merciful you know jesus embraced the cross willingly and he offered himself as a sacrifice so the scripture says so we are at mount zion we are at mount zion so what is that we are here to learn from this place that means we should come to zion hope heartedly at mount sinai only moses could climb the mountain but at mount zion all of us are welcome those who are believing jesus as a lord and savior it is an open invitation into this new jerusalem with that we will move on to the next verse colossians chapter 1 verse 13 and 14 can we all turn to colossians chapter 1 verse 13 and 14 it says he has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins so the scripture clearly says that he has delivered us from the power of darkness that means we have been delivered from the satan's dominion from the clutches of the enemy we have been delivered so the word as an idea of a rescue there is a sovereign power of jesus the blood of jesus carries sovereign power that delivers you and me from the clutches of the enemy 
another phrase here says the power of darkness which is also used in luke chapter 22 verse 53 talks about talks about the power of darkness where jesus spoke of the darkness surrounding his arrest and passion in the same term so these words refer to the the sinister forces that is that is coming against him for uh you know against him so something that is happening in the spiritual realm so the power of darkness is something to do in the spiritual realm but here god is saying that my power is much greater my power is much greater that is a sovereign power that can deliver you and me from the clutches of the enemy from the satan's dominion from something that is happening in the spiritual realm god i mean the blood of jesus can deliver it has a sovereign power that could deliver you and me even if we do not have the knowledge of it so and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love what does it mean conveyed into the kingdom of the son of his love so according to some scholars it says the word convey is been translated from the ancient world when one empire what when one empire conquers another so there is a custom here the custom is to take the population of the defeated empire and transfer it completely to the conquerors land so this is what happened when jesus rescued us from the enemy's hand so what happened this is what paul is saying here paul is saying that we have been conveyed into god's kingdom we have been conveyed into god's kingdom so everything that we have and everything that we are now belongs to him so we belongs to him we are just not redeemed we are just not conquered but we have a belonging we belong to god's kingdom we are into his kingdom so the son of his love what does the son of his love mean in hebrew the son of the law means god's dear son it means god's dear son so the very verse that says a conveyed us into kingdom of son of his love means we are been conveyed or we are into the kingdom of god with what as god's dear son we are we are having a sonship now with god we have been restored back to god's kingdom as a son we are god's dear son so son of his love is nothing but in hebrew which means god's dear son in whom the scripture says following in whom we have redemption through his blood that means this has an idea of release in legal term it is not something that you know is conveyed legally you have been redeemed legally there's a price that has been paid legal agreement has carries much value isn't it so legal ransom legal legally there is a payment which has been paid to purchase us from the satan's dominion so the price for our release was paid in full on the cross by jesus he shed his blood completely as a ransom to redeem us so here we see the forgiveness of sins the that means in the ancient greek word for forgiveness it means aphesis which is most literally means sending away so our sin and our guilt is sent away of what jesus did on the 
cross, we need to remember the sin and the guilt as no power over us. We have no power. We have been just sent away. We have been separated. We have been set apart and to Christ for a special purpose. That's what we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20. It says, For you were bought at a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So Paul is writing here very clearly, you have been bought with a price. If you buy certain gadgets, right, you have complete power over that. Isn't it? Do you allow another person to take that gadget and use from you? No, you have complete power. You protect it. And that gadget belongs to you. You have complete power over that. That's what here it says. You were bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So our body and our spirit belongs to God because he has paid a price for it. So what Paul is making here is our body belongs to Jesus and our spirit also belongs to him. So he is the owner of our body. And remember, he will not allow the demon to touch us. This is this body belongs to him. So the enemy has no power over our body. We need to believe that. Enemy has no power. It has lost the grip over us because now this is God's property. Our body is God's property. Our body belongs to Jesus, belongs to God. So we need to glorify God in our body and in our spirit, which are God. That means we need to take care of ourselves. We need to be mindful what we do with our body. We need to glorify God with our body. That's why we say we need to dress up modest. Whatever we do, it affects us. This body, we don't have any rights over our body. We cannot, I mean, you know, we cannot tattoo, we cannot cut, slit, you get upset. You know, some people are into this. Slit their hand. No. This is God's body and we do not have power over us. We belong to God. We need to honor this body. We need to glorify God in our body. We need to protect. Because our body and our spirit belongs to Jesus. Belongs to God. So the next is Galatians 3.13, which talks about redeemed from the curse of the law. We are redeemed from the curse of the law. Let's turn to Galatians chapter 3, verse 13, please. All of us, let's turn to Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. It reads like this, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. So we see that it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on the tree, that the blessing of Abraham, the next following verse, it says, the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of Christ through faith. So here we see, Verse 13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. That means we have been redeemed. There is a price that has been paid. So the law that existed before is, is that put us under the curse is no more active or no more effective over us. Why? Because Jesus has redeemed us from the curse of the law. 
it is not the sin that we committed immediately that is affecting or putting us into this curse but the curse the sin that was committed long back which brought the curse on all men and now the work that jesus did on the cross has redeemed us redeemed you and me from the curse of the law so it's not that we have become righteous by the act that we do but the act that jesus did on the cross so we have been redeemed by the work that jesus did on the cross where jesus purchased us from this from the curse of the law so with that we will move on to the next verse titus chapter 2 verse 14 redeemed from every lawless deeds the scripture says let's turn to titus chapter 2 verse 14 It reads like this: Who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. So we see that Jesus gave himself. So what we see here: the every word in this verse that describes Jesus, the work that Jesus did. is very important that we need to pay attention to so what did jesus do jesus gave himself voluntarily willingly he offered himself second he gave himself which means jesus gave all that he could give he gave himself for us which means jesus became the substitute for us for the sinful man that we may be redeemed so redemption here means to be bought out of slavery last uh, i mean few weeks before we studied about redemption how jesus redeemed us redemption means buying somebody from the slaves market redeeming the person from the slavery market and setting him for free so you and i have been redeemed from that slavery of sin nature and we have been set free unto god's kingdom so we have been bought with a price we have been purchased for his service from every lawless deeds that means we have been taught that death of jesus was intended not only for our forgiveness and justification but for sanctification what does sanctification mean for sanctification and deliverance from the power of all sins what does sanctification mean we have been set apart set apart from all the worldly things we are in the world but not of the world we have been set apart for the master's use we have been sanctified we are his own special people that means something very interesting we have been set apart as a vessel of honor we have been reserved for a special use unto god we are his special people he is interested in you and me the word of god says that i have called you i have chosen you even before you were formed in your mother's womb this is what god says that you are the special people whom he has chosen and he has set apart for a greater purpose for all good works so we have been redeemed purchased to live for god to live zealous that is be passionate whatever we do unto god we need to do it with passion with willingness 
being mindful of the call and the purpose that God that God has called each one of us. This is what one of the scholars say that you know we have been made righteous in Christ, where we need to have this purpose in our mind. When we have this purpose in our mind, we can serve God zealously. That means passionately. And whom is he telling? We read this from Titus, the book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 14. So to give a background about Titus, he was Titus was a teacher for teachers. So he had set in order the things that were wanting and to show other preachers how they should preach, how they should teach. So we need to see in this episode about an ordinary life. You and I, how we can lead an ordinary life and how to be holy, how to be pleasing God in the way of our life, how we can set us apart in this world and serve God with passion, being zealous for Him. Okay, with that, we will move on to Galatians chapter 1. Can we turn to Galatians chapter 1, which says, We are redeemed from this present evil age. We are redeemed from the present evil age. Now, the title is what he spoke about, how to lead a life that is sanctified, that is pleasing to God. Now, we cannot say he spoke that in a different generation. No matter which generation we live in, God's love is applicable to you and me. God's grace is available for you and me. That we can lead a life that is pleasing to Him. So we see in Galatians chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. Galatians chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. Can I request one of you all to please turn and read? Yes, please. Thank you. So here we see, no matter which generation we live in, God's grace is available for us. That's what this verse says. It says, grace to you and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins. Jesus gave himself. He sacrificed himself for you and me, despite the generation that we live in. This is active. He can redeem us. So he might deliver us from the present evil age. No matter how evil the world could be, but God's grace is sufficient to deliver you and me from that present evil age. And according to the will of God our Father. It is God's will for us to be redeemed and being set free. It is God's will. It's not that you desire that you want. No, it is God's will that you and I should be saved and live a life with freedom in Jesus Christ. In 1 Corinthians, let's look into 1 Corinthians chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. Yes, please read. First Corinthians chapter one verse thirty three zero. It says, "But of him, yes, please go ahead, Anand." So we see here in First Corinthians chapter one verse 
33.0, it says, But of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God. Jesus has become the wisdom from God and righteousness, sanctification and redemption. So Jesus became the wisdom of God and righteousness, sanctification and redemption. We also see in Psalms 107 verse 2. It says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. So you and I have been redeemed from the hand of the enemy. So we are coming back to the verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 30 talks about Jesus who became the wisdom of God for you and me. So Jesus perfectly showed us in his teaching and in his life that he carried God's wisdom. He demonstrated God's wisdom in his teaching, in his act. So the wisdom is often in contradiction to man's expectation. The wisdom of man is very different from wisdom of God. Man judges or, you know, uh, uh, um, yeah, man judges according to the outward appearance of a person. But God looks at the inward, looks at his heart. So God's wisdom is much greater than what man carries. So the true wisdom isn't about getting smarter, but God's wisdom is received in and through the person of Jesus Christ. So who became for us, who became for us. So Jesus is not only the wisdom for us, but he is also redemption, sorry, righteousness, sanctification and redemption. So Jesus is our righteousness, sanctification and redemption. So in his work, he communicates these three things to those who are in Christ Jesus. So we have the access to God's wisdom. How? Through Jesus Christ. So just not only the wisdom we have access to, but we have the access to his righteousness, to his sanctification and to his redemption. How? We have been made righteous. We have the right standing before God through Jesus Christ. Now we have been sanctified. That means made holy. We have been set apart. How? Through Jesus Christ. How? Jesus has given us the grace. Though we are in the world, we will not be of the world. Why? Because the grace, the greater is he who is in us, will give us the grace, will strengthen us to stand away from the sinful nature that is around us. We have been made new. How? By renewing our mind. Our identity is not on the position or on the things of the world, but our identity is in Christ, that we are the son and daughter of the Most High God. We have been set apart for a greater purpose. That's the reason, though there are many things in the world, you and I are here studying the word of God. Why? Because we are called to serve the Most High God. And we are not here by force. We are not here by somebody's recommendation. But we are here by our own choice. The Lord who is in you is leading you to him. Is increasing the passion toward him. Is, we have been increased day by day. We are growing in knowing more of him. We are growing to love him more. We are getting deep into him in understanding and in coming into the knowledge of Christ. 
how the spirit of the lord who is in you is helping you to know more on him there is no point that you and i can say that i know god completely we do not our mind do not have the capacity or the ability to understand the wisdom of god but the spirit of the lord who is in you is leading you that's what in romans chapter 8 he says the lord who is in you will lead you more you will also pray according to the situation even though you and i do not know how to pray but the spirit of the lord who is in you will teach you will guide you and he will lead you so jesus is not only the wisdom to us or the righteousness and sanctification but he is also the redemption for you and me what is that the other word we studied in the redemption is we are been redeemed from the slave of the sin to and been set free in the kingdom of god we have the freedom we have the freedom in christ and this freedom is permanent because the purchase that jesus made on the cross the blood that jesus shed on the cross was one time sacrifice was one time payment and it was one time purchase so we have been redeemed forever in christ jesus no matter what the enemy can speak into our life and to our mind we need to believe that we have been redeemed by the most high god so in revelation chapter 12 verse 11 revelation chapter 12 verse 11 talks about they overcame him by the blood of the lamb they overcame him revelations chapter 12 verse 11 it says and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they did not love their lives to the death so what it says and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb means this also tells us three keys to the saints victory over satan we are the saints of god do you all believe we are the saints of god when it says they overcame him by the blood of the lamb the blood overcame satan's accusation those accusation means nothing against us because jesus has already paid the penalty for our sins that we deserve Jesus has paid a price. We also see in Ephesians chapter one seven or Colossians chapter one fourteen, and also in Hebrews chapter nine fourteen, we see that we are been made righteous by the work that Jesus did on the cross. We have been made righteous by the work that Jesus did on the cross. Now, although it is also important for us. that we should not disregard we should not regard the blood of jesus as a superstitious thing or it is not a magical potion that you know if jesus blood is sprinkled you have been saved no even the jesus blood was also sprinkled on the roman soldiers but did they uh, did they receive jesus as the lord and savior uh, did they uh, were they saved no so everyone who believes on jesus there is something to do with our faith with our belief when we believe that jesus is the son of god jesus died on the cross for you and me and when we receive him as our savior we have been saved his blood has been active upon us it's not something literal but yes in faith so the blood of jesus as a sovereign power to redeem you and me from the clutches of the enemy so jesus paid a price he shed his complete blood on the cross and he has purchased you and me forever and our body belongs to jesus our spirit belongs to god 
So the enemy has no power. No matter what the enemy can tell you, no, he is a liar. He can tell us different tales in our mind. But then you need to tell him that I belong to Christ. That's what the scripture says. That my body and my spirit belongs to Jesus. And the enemy has no power over our body. The blood of Jesus has been paid and purchased us for full. Okay? So with that, we will end the session that we have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. And the blood of Jesus has a sovereign power to redeem us from the enemy's hand. And we have been redeemed, we have been saved, and we have been set free from the clutches of the enemy. And we need to believe this so that we can identify ourselves in Christ. And we can declare this in full faith that we are redeemed. We are been identified in Christ. So who I am is who I am in Christ. Or who we are is who we are in Christ Jesus. So with that, we will end the session with a word of prayer. Father, we come into this presence, Lord. I come at each of us in our class, in online class, and the students who will watch this later. Father, we pray that we are we are thankful, Lord, for your son, Jesus Christ, for the work that he did on the cross to redeem us. Thank you, Lord, that we are your special people. Thank you for your love, Lord, that you loved us so much that you gave your only begotten son on the cross who died for us, who shed his blood and redeemed us in full, who set us free, Father, from the clutches of the enemy, and you gave us the freedom in you, O oh Lord. Thank you, Father, that you are mindful of us. Thank you, Lord, that you have called us your precious one. Thank you, Father, for the redeeming work that you had planned from the foundation of the earth. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for who you are in us. Thank you for this understanding. Thank you for the revelation, Lord. Thank you, Father, that we can identify ourselves in you, where we can call you with freedom. We can call you Abba, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. I hope the session was a blessing. God bless.